A massive horde of zombies had invaded the city of Alderna a few hours ago. The people had procedures for this kind of thing. Pulling off an evacuation was old hat. Wait at a safe distance until the wanderers passed, then return home. However, this time was a little different. Stragglers were always a problem. There are always losses during an evacuation. When the reports came back that a zombie horde was on its way, many of the city's leaders had gathered on the top floor of the government's ruling tower for a special meeting about current issues. We had been called in by the townsfolk and offered a big bag of money to go in and rescue the people locked up in that building, bring them back down to safety. The zombie horde is large and they're pretty ravenous. This is going to be a tough one. Cress, the leader in charge, dropped the first portion of our payment in my hand. Be careful, he said. Cress was the leader of the hunting party. They'd been gone when the news came. The hunting party had normally been the lowest on the totem pole. Now, he suddenly had thousands of people under his watch. It was no wonder why he was acting a little nervous. Don't worry, Nicole spoke up. We're the best in the business. Consider it done. Cress nodded. Thank you, he said. Those people represent our brightest and most talented minds. I fear our community will fall apart if we lost them all at the same time. Keep your people quiet. No need to risk the chance of luring the wanderers over to your position, I said. Don't worry. My people are used to these sorts of conditions. The wandering horde won't hear a thing from us, Cress said. Then we'll get to work. Come on, everyone, I said. Nicole followed right behind me. There were two more besides us. Dodger was standing a distance off. He didn't care what we did or what the circumstances were, as long as he got to fight. The other was Daniel, my son. I bring him along every mission we get. He's just as vital a member as anyone else. Some might call me mad or crazy for putting a 12-year-old boy in danger like that. Maybe I am a little mad, a little crazy. But in this day and age, there's no room for dead weight. The kid's got to earn his keep, learn a trade. Besides, wanderers don't care what age you are when they bite down. Their only question is, can they eat you? Letting my son come along lets him learn how to conduct himself in the field. It makes sure that when it comes to my son, the answer to that question will always be no. Together, we went on to the edge of town and we waded into the sea of starving zombies. We had to be brutal. We had to be quick or this operation would fail before it had even started. You done? Finally, I was just messaging people. Oh god, now I can't get sort my phone out. Welcome, everybody, to... I forgot the name of this game. <laughs> it's in the title. Yeah! Okay, chill. Where am I meant? Target. Am I, am I meant to go after him? So cool. Nice. That's a lot of blood. Oh, Jesus. The mouse sensitivity is so fast. Did I just make everyone sick? Oh god. Oh Jesus. Am I a 12 year old boy? Got ya. Who's next? Oh. 
confused, they've got multiple skins. Oh god, this guy's making me burn up. Ah! <laughs> hey now what? Ah, more! Isn't that nice? I'm out of ammo. <laughs> ah, thank you. Ow! Run away! <laughs> oh. I'm going to the green spot. Oh god. I, I just noticed I haven't been talking that much. <laughs> this is just intense. Oh! Where are they? Say hello to my little friend! Katana! <laughs> Why won't you die? What do I have to do to kill you? Oh, did you have you lost health? 
You have, you've lost her. Much better! Yeah! God! This game is insane! It feels like I'm shouting really loud. Okay, let's continue then. After our bloody journey through the Horde, we finally made it to the lobby of the town's government tower. I tossed Daniel a walkie-talkie and he went to scout up ahead. So what's the plan? Dodger asked. Since we're here to rescue a group of non-combatants, I think we should stress caution, I said. So we're going to move on all quiet, like right? Nicole asked. I think that's the best course of action. We'll make our way to the leaders and hold down the fort until the horde finishes passing through, I said. Just then, the radio went off. Daniel whispered through the line. Hey, Dad, there are a few wanderers up ahead, but he cut himself off. But what, I asked. I don't think they're alone, Daniel had said. Nicole took the radio from my hands and spoke into it. Hey kid, are you trying to tell us you see the hostages, she asked. No, not quite, Daniel whispered back. What do you mean, Nicole asked. Well, wait, hold on, Daniel whispered. I took the radio back from Nicole. What was that, I asked. Someone's coming, Daniel said. Who, I asked. No response. Daniel, do you see the prisoners? Daniel, I shouted. Still no response. What's the call, boss? Dodger asked. My call is the only one I can make. We're going in, I said. Quiet like? Nicole asked. Whatever it takes, I said. That's more like it, Dodger said. We went up a few floors where Daniel was supposed to be. That's when we encountered an enemy that was far from what we were expecting. An armed man walking around in a wanderer-infested building. He was no leader. This man was an invader. We'd soon discover that this incident went deeper than anyone had expected. There wasn't supposed to be anyone else here, I said. Looks like things just got a lot more complicated, Nicole said. Never mind, we've come too far. We have to complete the mission and find Daniel. Let's go, I said. It took a lot of hard fighting, but we managed to reach the top where the town's leaders were supposed to be. They weren't there. Dodger pointed to a nearby door. It had swung open. We went through it. The door led to the roof. Another group of bandits had brought the leaders up to the roof. We weren't sure what was going on at the time, but the bandits were planning to kidnap the leaders. Daniel had been gathered up as well. They probably thought he was their son, one of them. One turned and spotted us. There was no turning back now. We'd almost won. Things were looking up when we heard the sound of a helicopter come by. That's when I first saw him the leader of the bandits. The helicopter landed. Gunfire from the copter's minigun forced us into cover. Get them on board quick, the leader said. The people were pushed on board, including Daniel. I wanted to call out, but I feared to make our connection known would doom him. I was forced to watch those thieves fly away with the city leaders and my son. If that weren't bad enough, the helicopter was loud enough to draw the attention of the wanderers. We had a lot of fighting to do if I ever wanted to save Daniel. <laughs> Done? Okay. I'm going to leave this episode here. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode. If you liked it, hit that like button. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you watch another video. And make sure you leave a comment on what you want to see me do next time. And I'll see you next time. Bye.